Christopher decided to throw a party. He's a taller one to the left. He talks and goes on about philosophy. The girl in front of him had arrived with a shorter boy, but she has now taken entire interest in Christopher. Many of Christopher's friends have already left for another party and another flat, and the rest is bound to leave sooner or later. Christopher's girlfriend, Marianne, has been upset since the party started. Marianne gets too emotional when she has had one too many drinks. Her cell phone rang and she left the room a few moments ago. Marianne just told her sister that Christopher decided to break off the relationship. She didn't care much about it and hung up. Marianne is trying to call her back. But she didn't answer. She wants to cry. Christopher cleverly broke up with Marianne just before everyone arrived. He knew she wouldn't dare do anything or say anything, and has been ignoring her all the while. What if things were different? Why is she here, she wonders. What if nothing could spoil her happiness? It's as if she awoke in the middle of the night and all was black. Things slowly acquired meaning as the years went on. How queer this condition, she thought, to sit here and think this about him. Wish I'd said something back, some kind word or two, or to have kissed his hand. <sighs> the air is still warm, she thought, solacing herself with words. There's meadow, somewhere in the forest, somewhere far away, somewhere past the mountains and well beyond from what the eye can see. There is a meadow in the forest, midst the trees of all that ever died and a fountain in between, and one can rest upon cold stone or grass and play with the ripples of the water. I was once there before I was born, and I'm trying to find my way back. Marianne is remembering something that has not happened, and everything can change. Marianne is neither here nor there. Marianne is remembering something that will happen when her phone rings and when she leaves the room. Everything will change. And what is important lies between the mirrors of the mind, between its acts of perspection, rests in the curtains of imagination, and everything depends on how the room is lit, or how the sound is heard, or how the words are said, or when. Well.